NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg says it's time for Turkey to ratify Sweden and Finland's bids to join the Western Defence Alliance. Mr Stoltenberg is in Ankara to express NATO's solidarity and support after devastating twin earthquakes killed more than 36,000 people in those countries. Now to just demonstrate that uh, uh, Sweden and Finland uh, understand uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, are implementing um, uh, policies which uh, recognizes uh, uh, the, the, the concerns that uh, Turkey has expressed and also why um, I think that the time has come uh, uh, to ratify. Let me add one more thing and that is that this is this is a Turkish decision. The NATO chief is scheduled to visit areas affected by the disaster during his visit. The alliance has provided tens of thousands of shelters to Turkey, which are expected to arrive in the coming days. Mr. Stoltenberg will meet Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to discuss the continuation of NATO relief support. For more, Shamim Chowdhury joins us live from Adana in Turkey. Shamim, Mr. Stoltenberg says that it's time for Turkey to ratify Sweden and Finland's bids to join NATO. How will this play out for Turkish President Erdogan amid recovery efforts and possible national elections that will take place later this year? Well, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has uh, a lot of this kind of, to, to give it some context, uh, stems from Turkey's accusation that Sweden and Finland, in fact, have not done enough to uh, help curb the uh, threat of terrorism on Turkish ground, and that's been, which has been the case for 40 years or so. And Stoltenberg actually referred to that in his press conference today, and he acknowledged that no other NATO alliance has suffered as much uh, terrorism on its territory as Turkey has, and that it was within its uh, right to uh, show a degree of reticence in, the, uh, in Sweden and F Finland joining the alliance. He did, as you just said, say that it was time to ratify uh, their membership. But he also went on to add that it was entirely Turkish de uh, Turkey's decision. Now, in terms of whether this complicates matters in, uh, as a result of what's been happening on the ground, well, it's certainly another element that... Uh, it's certainly another thing that Turkey has to factor into account. Uh, it is... Uh, but, having said that, uh, Stoltenberg went on to say that NATO uh, has, uh, Turkey has NATO's full support. He described it as the worst, uh, uh, worst event in the alliance's entire history. You mentioned the tents. Uh, he also said that uh, thousands of, of NATO member personnel have been on the ground and that the, country, uh, the uh, alliance will continue to provide support. And he also made a reference to US, UK, Norway and the ne Netherlands providing uh, military aid, military humanitarian assistance um, over the course of this, uh, this period. And as you said, he will be visiting a number of worst hit cities in Hatay uh, to, to t take a look for himself at the destruction. But certainly um, it is, you know, Sweden and Finland's uh, joining of NATO is yet another uh, element that Turkey has to uh, contend with, as well as this devastating earthquake. Shamim, with respect to relief efforts, you're at a small tent city that's housing evacuated people in Adana today. How else are authorities actually responding to the earthquake's immediate aftermath? Well, there has been a bit of criticism uh, accusing the authorities for taking... Uh, a few days or so to reach the sites. But since then, they have deployed tens of thousands of rescue workers and actually a whole lot more um, officials in many different capacities to assist with the rescue operation. There has been a, a concerted shift now into um, uh, attending to the survivors and the injured, which run above 100,000 uh, at the moment. So the tents that you see, see behind me, uh, most of them have been provided by AFAD, which is Turkey's uh, official emergency management uh, uh, authority. But there are tents from the international community and other charities as well. So that is what they're going to be focusing on now. But having said that, the rescue mission is still ongoing. And just within the past 24 hours or so, a 17-year-old girl was found alive in the city of Marash. And that is 
248 hours after the earthquake happened. The recovery process is going to take months, perhaps even longer. We are talking about tens of thousands of people injured and tens of thousands of people evacuated. There has been a very large international response, but is it enough? Well, time will tell. Shamim, thank you for that. Shamim Chowdhury there reporting from Adana in Turkey.